to happen, and the Republicans, likewise, are very much wanting something to happen. And I think it will. I spoke with, uh, at length with Mitch McConnell, and uh, there's tremendous uh, spirit to get something done, so we'll see what happens. But my conversation was very good with Senator Schumer. I thank you all for joining us, and I'd like to begin by providing an update on what we are doing to minimize the impact of the Chinese virus on our nation's students. With many schools closed due to the virus, the Department of Education will not enforce standardized testing requirements, very importantly, for students in elementary through high school for the current year. They've been through a lot. They've been going back and forth, schools open, schools not open. It's been all standardized uh, testing, and, you know, it's uh, — we're not going to be enforcing that, so I think you can let the people know. I think uh, probably a lot of the students would be extremely happy, some probably not. The ones that work hard, maybe not, but uh, it's one of those things. Uh, unfortunate, very unfortunate circumstance. We've also temporarily waived all interest on federally held student loans. They'll be very happy to hear that. And I've instructed them to take that action immediately. And today, Secretary DeVos has directed federal lenders to allow borrowers to suspend their student loans and loan payments without penalty for at least the next 60 days. And if we need more, we'll extend that period of time. Borrowers should contact their lenders, but we've given them very strong instructions. So we've uh, temporarily waived all interest on federally held student loans. That's a big thing. That's going to make a lot of students very happy. And we have more to come on student loans, more good news for the students. But we'll do that at a different time. This morning, the Treasury Department also announced that we're moving tax day from April 15th to July 15th. So we're, uh, we're moving it out to July 15th so that people will have time and people will be able to, hopefully, by that time, we'll have people getting back to their lives. Families and businesses will have this extra time to file with no interest or penalties. We're getting rid of interest and penalties. However, if you have refunds or credits you would like to claim, you may still file. In other words, you can file early if you are owed money by the IRS. Other than that, uh, we're moving it all the way out to July 15th. No interest, no penalties. Your new date will be July 15th. Today, our team will also provide an update on our continuing effort to prevent the transmission of virus across America's borders. And uh, I watched uh, what's been happening in California with Governor Newsom and uh, this morning with Governor Cuomo. And uh, I applaud them. They're taking very strong, bold steps, and I applaud them. And uh, we're all working together. We're working very closely together, including those two governors. But I would say, based on the call, the media was there. Uh, I think we can say that with respect to virtually every governor in that call, I think every governor, we had almost all of them, if not all of them, and uh, I would say that uh, you could see for yourselves that the level of respect and uh, esprit de corps working together was extraordinary. There was no nobody angry, nobody upset. Uh, we're able to help them, and uh, that's what we're all about. We want to help. Uh, we're doing things that uh, a lot of people wouldn't be able to do. But the relationship with governors and states is, I, I think, very extraordinary, especially under the, the circumstances where this just came upon us. We're working with Canada and Mexico to prevent the spread of the virus across North America very closely. You heard what we did yesterday with Canada. And uh, Secretary of State Pompeo will be making a statement in a little while having to do with Mexico and the border. And Chad, likewise, Chad Wolf will likewise be making a statement. This is a joint comprehensive effort in collaboration with our neighbors. The measure and all of those measures that we're putting in place will protect the health of all three nations and reduce the incentive for a mass global migration that would badly deplete the health care resources needed for our people. And so we are working very closely with Mexico, very, very closely with, uh, with Canada. Uh, the relationship's never been better. We're all working for the same — toward the same goal. 
Yeah. Our nation's top health care officials are extremely concerned about the grave public health consequences of mass uncontrolled cross-border movement. And that would be mostly and even beyond, but mostly during this uh, global pandemic. Every week, our border agents encounter thousands of unscreened, unvetted, and unauthorized entries from dozens of countries. And we've had this problem for decades. For decades, you know the story. But now it's uh, with the national emergencies and all of the other things that we've declared, we can actually do something about it. We're taking a very strong hold of that. And we have before, but this is now at a level that uh, nobody's ever approached. In normal times, these massive flows place a vast burden on our health care system. But during a global pandemic, they threatened to create a perfect storm that would spread the infection to our border agents, migrants, and to the public at large. Left unchecked, this would cripple our immigration system, overwhelm our health care system, and severely damage our national security. We're not going to let that happen. So. Uh, uh, we have a lot of information, and they'll be discussing that in a moment. To confront these public health degrees, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has decided to exercise its authority under the Title 42 of the U.S. Code to give Customs and Border Protection the tools it needs to prevent the transmission of the virus coming through both the northern and the southern borders. So we're treating the borders equally the northern border and the southern border. It's being treated, they're both being treated equally. A lot of people say that they're not treated equally. Well, they are. As we did with Canada, we're also working with Mexico to implement new rules at our ports of entry to suspend non-essential travel. These new rules and procedures will not impede lawful trade and commerce. Furthermore, Mexico is taking action to secure our own southern border and suspend air travel from Europe. So we're coordinating very closely with the air travel going to Mexico and then trying to come into the United States. The actions we're taking together with our North American partners will save countless lives. At the conclusion of my remarks, Secretary Azar, Secretary Pompeo, Secretary Wolf, uh, we're going to uh, be also taking some questions with Tony and Deborah, who you've gotten to know very well. Uh, but they'll be uh, discussing certain things, and uh, I think you'll find them of great interest. We're going to be providing tremendous uh, amounts of detail over the coming days, but a lot of it will be provided right now if you'd like to find out about it. There's been a week of resolute action, tremendous action, tremendous uh, relationships have developed with people that, frankly, didn't get along, people that didn't like each other. They're now working together and maybe even, in some cases, learning about each other and liking each other. It's a nice thing. I invoked the Defense Production Act, uh, and last night we put it into gear. We moved the national response coordination center to the highest level of activists. I mean, if you, if you take a look at what we did, uh, the level of activation has been increased to a grade one level, which is the highest level. We're providing uh, historic support to small businesses and to the states. The states need support. Normally, they do this themselves, but because of the magnitude of it, the federal government has gotten very much involved in terms of getting the equipment they need. So we're helping them. It's, uh, it's a responsibility they have, but we are helping the states a lot. That's why the governors, I think, in every case have been impressed and very nice. We enacted legislation guaranteeing paid sick leave for workers at no cost to employers. And I think it's very important. So they get uh, paid sick leave at no cost to employers. We're accelerating the use of new drug treatments. We're advancing legislation to give direct payments to hardworking families. Throughout our country, Americans from all walks of life are rallying together to defeat the unseen enemy striking our nation. In times of struggle, we see the true greatness of the American character. And we are seeing that. A lot of people are talking about it. We're in 141 countries, from what they're telling me. And uh, 
Some of those countries are really working uh, in a unified manner, and they're working very unified with us, almost, uh, I could say, a good, a good number of them. Doctors and nurses are working nonstop to heal the sick. Citizens and churches are delivering meals to the needy. Truckers are making the long haul to keep shelves stocked. We've been dealing with the big stores and the big chains, Walmart. They've been fantastic, and others. They've all been fantastic. We've made it much easier for them to stock in terms of travel and travel restrictions. We're lifting restrictions so they can get their trucks on time. You're seeing very few empty shelves. And yet, the amount of volume that they're doing is unprecedented because people want to have what they have to have, what they feel they have to have. And they're also buying in slightly smaller quantities, which is good, because uh, we're not going anywhere. We're going to be here. So I want to thank all of those very great companies for working so well. Americans from every walk of life are coming together. And thanks to the spirit of our people, we will win this war. And we are. We're winning, and we're going to win this war. America will triumph, and America will rise higher than ever before. We'll be stronger than ever before. And we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot. We've learned a lot about relying on other countries. And uh, I can say that I think in both a very good and a very bad way. Uh, some good things came out of it, and some not-so-good things came out of it. So I'd like to move now to invite our team to provide information on the new measures to prevent viral spread at our borders. And I'll start by asking Secretary of State Pompeo to speak. He's doing a fantastic job. And like everyone else, he's been working very, very long and very, very hard. And he's doing the other more uh, normal jobs of a great Secretary of State. But uh, he, got, he got tied into this like everybody else, and he's been really doing a fantastic job. Mike, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before I uh, address uh, the efforts that we've been engaged in to push back against the Chinese virus, I want to assure the American people that, as President Trump just said, your State Department, your entire national security team is uh, staying focused on the other diplomatic challenges around the world. Those include uh, reducing risk to America from Afghanistan, holding the Iranian regime accountable for its malign activity, and our counterterrorism efforts against ISIS remain a priority for our team. Uh, our number one uh, priority across across those mission sets remains the protection of the American people. The President and our team are very focused on it. I'll take this moment, too, to thank uh, my team, State Department team, who is working long hours all around the world to take care of Americans uh, who are stuck at places around the world. I'll talk about that more in just a, a minute. You've all seen Dr. Burks with me, a State Department official who's doing great work. But I want to I give a shout-out to all of the State Department team here in Washington and around the world that are working overtime uh, to help us push back against this uh, pandemic. Uh, under the President's leadership this week, we've taken two important steps. First, as President Trump announced on Wednesday, the United States and Canada jointly agreed to restrict all non-essential traffic across our border. This decision goes into effect tonight at midnight. The restrictions will be reviewed after 30 days, uh, and they exclude traffic and movement across the border for work or other essential reasons. We're grateful to have such an outstanding friend to the north who is committed, as we are, to defeating this virus. I also want to announce today uh, that the United States and Mexico have agreed to restrict non-essential travel across our shared border. Both our countries know the importance uh, of working together to limit the spread of the virus and ensure that uh, commerce that supports our economy continues to keep flowing. Uh, here, too, the United States is uh, glad to have a friend who's working si side by side us in the fight. Uh, Secretary uh, Wolf will talk a little bit more about the details of how we're working alongside our partner in Mexico to keep our southern border safe and secure as well. Uh, on another note, yesterday the State Department issued a Level 4 Global Travel Advisory. This means that all international travel from U.S. citizens should be avoided. In countries where commercial departure options remain available, U.S. citizens who reside in the United States should arrange for immediate return to the United States unless they're prepared to remain abroad for an extended time. If you choose to travel internationally, your travel plans may well be severely disrupted. Uh, and finally, I want to talk about the disinformation that people are seeing. 
both on Twitter and around the world, some of it coming from government, some of it coming from other individuals. Just urge everyone, as they're seeing information, uh, information that at one time suggested somehow this virus emanated from the United States Army, this informa information about lockdowns that are taking place. Uh, every American, indeed, people all around the world should ensure that where they turn to for information uh, is a reliable source and not uh, a bad actor trying to uh, create and flow uh, information that they know is wrong. Uh, this is a tough fight. The American people are tougher. Our diplomatic teams are working around the clock to help them keep safe both home and abroad. And we're showing once again uh, the global leadership that America has always delivered. And it's been great to see countries around the world rally behind what President Trump and our team are doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. And we'll take questions right after this. Uh, Chad Wolf, please. Right behind you. Well, let me start off by thanking the President and the Vice President for their continued leadership and commitment for protecting the American people during this crisis. Early on, the President, again, took unprecedented actions to restrict travel from areas affected with the coronavirus. And to date, DHS has screened over 200,000 individuals coming back from those affected countries. This has been an immense undertaking, but one that the men and women of DHS have successfully accomplished. Today's announcement is yet another example of the extraordinary steps the administration is taking to ensure the safety of the American public. Before I comment on the CDC order that I'm sure Secretary Azar will later elaborate on, let me first address the progress as uh, Secretary Pompeo and others uh, have made with our Canadian and Mexican partners regarding cross-border travel. As we continue to evaluate common sense measures that reduce risk and prevent further spread, it only makes sense that we have looked, to, uh, looked at the measures that our neighbors to the north and south are undertaking. And so we've been working closely with those partners since the earliest days of this virus and the outbreak. And again, as the President uh, did, said earlier this week and Secretary Pompeo, we've reached an agreement, an agreement with both Canada and Mexico to, elim uh, to limit non-essential travel across our land borders. Uh, let me be clear that neither of these agreements with Canada or Mexico applies to lawful trade or commerce. Essential commercial activities will not be impacted. We will continue to maintain a strong and secure economic supply chain across our borders. A few examples of essential travel include, but certainly are not limited to, individuals traveling for medical purposes, to attend educational institutions, for emergency response, public health services, and individuals engaged in lawful cross-border trade. As the Secretary uh, said, the agreements with both Canada and Mexico will go into effect uh, on Saturday, March 21st. Furthermore, we're also working collaboratively with Canada and Mexico to take decisive joint action regarding individuals seeking entry between our ports of entry. The CDC order directs the Department to suspend the introduction of all individuals seeking to enter the U.S. without proper travel documentation. That's for both the northern and southern border. The CDC director has determined that the introduction and spread of the coronavirus in the department's border patrol stations and detention facilities presents a serious danger to migrants, our frontline agents and officers, and the American people. So it's important to note that the department currently apprehends foreign nationals from over 120 different countries around the world, the vast majority of those having coronavirus cases. Many of these individuals arrive with little or no identity, travel, or medical documentation, making public health risk determinations all but impossible. It's also important to note that the outbreak on our southern border would likely increase the strain on health systems in our border communities, taking away important and life-saving resources from American citizens. Tonight, again at midnight, we will execute the CDC order by immediately returning individuals arriving without documentation to Canada, Mexico, as well as a number of other countries without delay. And so, again, CB CBP is positioned to execute these measures as we continue to keep our borders secure and safe. Before I conclude, let me just uh, wrap up by thanking the brave men and women of DHS, specifically CBP, and across the government for the work that they do day in and day out to keep the American people safe from the coronavirus. The department has a number of frontline officers that have been has tested positive, as well as others who are self-quarantining and that I am doing everything that I can to protect these patriots as they continue to defend our homeland during this crisis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Today's announcement is just the latest in a long line of bold, decisive actions the president has taken to protect Americans from the coronavirus spreading across our borders. In January, within two weeks of China's notifying WHO about the virus, and with only 45 cases in China, we began screening travelers from Wuhan. Then over time, as the outbreak evolved, the president restricted travel from China, Iran, and Europe. Our health experts say that these measures have been truly effective at slowing the virus's spread to our shores. Just think about this. Italy and the United States both saw their first travel-related case of coronavirus around the exact same time the last week of January. And yet we have had precious time to continue our work around vaccines, therapeutics, 